Welcome. Welcome all. Please sit down, and if you'd like to take notes, feel free. Now, as ubiquitous as the trading companies are, they were not always a factor in pirate life here in the Sea of Thieves. Some grew purely within the Sea of Thieves, whilst others represent intruding branches from the outside world. As some of you may have surmised, this lecture is pertaining to these pillars of commerce within the seas. Now, first off, let's begin with the gold hoarders, the earliest and likely best known of all the companies. They make profit primarily on opening the chests that us pirates cannot, with the aid of their skeleton keys. These skeleton keys were forged alongside the locked chests found across the Sea of Thieves, and were made by the Pirate Lord's crew, the first pirates to venture into the Sea of Thieves. Shan, the quartermaster of Ramsey's crew, forged these chests and keys. The skeleton keys are one of two relics that have survived from the very moment of the Gold Hoarder's inception. Some time ago, the Pirate Lord assembled a meeting at Golden Sands Outpost. He offered a fair pirating deal. I'll leave the choice of whether this was a good idea or not up to each of you individual students. However, those present at the meeting didn't have the luxury of time with which to mull over their decision, as the outpost was attacked by an awakened Kraken. While firmly entrenched in the chaos of battle, Ramsay was betrayed by his crewmate Rathbone, who did not believe in the ideals that Ramsay held. Rathbone stole the keys from Ramsay, and from there began to grow his empire, opening the locked chests to retrieve the treasures within. Eventually, Rathbone would succumb to Cursed Gold inside the ancient ruins of Tribute Peak, leading him to become the infamous skeleton lord, the Gold Hoarder. Internally, and at the highest levels, the Gold Hoarders work almost like a cult, with trusted members branded with a key tattoo and initiated via ceremony into a brotherhood that knows the secret of their leader. The maps that pirates buy from the Gold Hoarders are obtained from the Order of Souls, as they often come across the information in their work. Overall, greedy businessmen infused with a cult are the gold hoarders, in short. However, if it is the truly a cult that catches your eye, then the previously mentioned Order of Souls will likely be of interest to you. The Order uses rituals to extract the memories from the skulls of deceased or cursed pirates, then transferring this information to parchments as maps. Not much is known about this group due to their secretiveness, but it is believed they can foresee the future and that they hold immense magical power. Dark relics are objects holding high importance to the Order of Souls and can be used for an array of purposes. A clutch of these objects were once stolen from the Order, and they urgently requested pirates to find the skeleton crews in possession of these artefacts and return them. This, however, did not stop their utilisation at what was once Old Boot Fort and the site of the wreckage of the Black Witch. Their use at Old Boot Fort resulted in its transformation into the Fort of the Damned, and their relic's use was seen again to free the trapped soul of Sir Arthur Pendragon. The Order turns a profit by selling the Gold Hoarders their maps, a system Madame Olivia began when she entered the Sea of Thieves and met with Heathcliff of the Gold Hoarders. The Order initially started with three members, Olivia being their leader of sorts. Seeking magical powers, Olivia somehow became in possession of a cursed skull from the Sea of Thieves, and after witnessing a vision of her older self from this skull, this set her and her companions on the path to attaining their destiny within the Sea of Thieves. Now we come to the last of the big three trading companies that have established themselves within the seas, the Merchant Alliance. The Merchant Alliance is the port of call, so to speak, for all manners of commerce in the Sea of Thieves. For most, they're seen as stuffy salespeople, and true to their nature, that's exactly what they are. The merchants supply most of the resources within the Sea of Thieves via trade routes and cargo ships. Although they would prefer to work without pirates, they recognise the unique potential pirate crews can have in increasing their business, and so offer up their quests. 
This highlights an interesting trait that those within the Sea of Thieves have to deal with. Companies and people alike must adapt or be destroyed due to the lawless and oftentimes magical environment present. Outside the Shroud, the Grand Maritime Union, a merchant and trading conglomerate, controls most of everything. Smaller shop owners are either removed outright or slowly strangled out of business by the GMU. Naturally, once word of the Sea of Thieves reached those in control of the GMU, they set their sights to cornering yet another slice of the market. A fledgling businesswoman for the GMU named Molly was tasked with this voyage due to her exemplary actions, although she was not in charge. Her superiors disregarded the rumours of the Shroud's might and attempted to send a fleet through, as one might suspect. This action was met with misfortune, as ship after ship succumbed to the corrosive aura of the Shroud. Molly's ship only barely managed to make it through the passing. What may have seemed a miracle turned to yet another tragedy as pirates stalked the entry point, ready to ambush. Molly and a few of her superiors were left to drift as the pirates stole the remaining vessel and its cargo. Of course, even her superiors could not be trusted as they left her marooned. Eventually, a friendly crew of pirates rescued Molly as she came to learn the ways of sailing, growing an appreciation for the life of a pirate. With her skill as a tradesperson, she sought to establish a company that could use the unique abilities of pirates as a ferrying business, moving goods from outpost to outpost. And this is how the Merchant Alliance came to be. The Alliance itself is run by committee, despite Molly being founder and having the title of Chief Trader. In short, imagine the Merchant Alliance as the Uber of the Sea of Thieves, just for goods. The next three companies we're going to discuss are either smaller in capacity or more mysterious and simply have less information pertaining to them. So as such, we'll be grouping them together. The Hunter's Call is a small family operator company led by Merrick's wife, Serek. They specialize in fishing and food, taking Ivor quite happily. It's thought that they may have some hand in the food trade within the Sea of Thieves, and so likely have a partnership with the Merchant Alliance. They're the only faction found on sea posts, often found fishing or cooking. Merrick and Serek began the company after Merrick retired from monster hunting, not long after the events of the Hungering Deep, with Merrick's ship and crew having been destroyed by the first Megalodon, the Hungering One. The Sea Dogs were a faction centered around competitions held regularly in which fierce battles were fought. This faction was led by DeMarco and Lacedes Singh, children of the Pirate Lord. However, unfortunately, the company's future is uncertain after its recent closure. Athena's Fortune is a company accessible to only those with the auspicious title of Pirate Legend, with the Pirate Lord Ramsay presiding over it. Little is known about the company, other than that they give Pirate Legends gruelling voyages to endure while helping the other trade companies, and that they initially began as an alliance. The Tavern of Legends is where they are centred, and only pirate legends are allowed in. And lastly, we come to the Reaper's Bones. They are relatively newer to the seas, and offer true piracy in the form of encouraging crews to fight others and sow chaos. In return, the Reapers pay handsomely for treasure turned into them. It's thought that they either sell the valuables or melt them down under the trap door in their hideout. The Reapers built the hideout using the wreck of Merrick's ship, the Killer Whale, after it was sunk by the Megalodon, as previously mentioned. Skeleton runes adorn their items, often as a way to intimidate those few who know the runes' meaning. This and other factors point towards the Reapers being a skeleton ran faction, who are allied with, or possibly formed, by Captain Flameheart Sr. With this frame of reference in mind, it isn't hard to make one of two conclusions. The Reaper's ideals are similar or identical to Flameheart Senior's, and thus he's really not all that bad, or the Reapers are a splinter faction closer to pirates. The sole representative of the Reaper's hideout is called the Servant of the Flame, who has been revealed to be the son of Flameheart. 
Throughout the history of the Sea of Thieves, the trading companies have been pivotal, and that likely won't change soon. And of course, each is good and bad in some cases. However, their history and the power they hold makes them interesting, as well as those operating under their banners. And with all that said and done, that will conclude today's lecture on the trading companies. Thank you for attending class.